Sharks taking on the Cowboys, and it's a tale of two halves. This sets up to be, again, another big game. Hard to split, hard to pick. You've got a team that's confident, Cowboys. You've got a team that's struggling with confidence in the Sharks. We've spoken about Nico and his struggles, but this man over here did and certainly isn't. He's on the other end of the, of the scale at the moment. He's flying. Uh, how do you think this is going to pan out? Like, uh, after what I just said then, and... I suppose with the mindset of not only the teams but the respective halves going into this one, who's got the advantage? Well, you can't help but like and respect the way that Tommy Dearden goes about his business. He's so direct when he runs the football. He's so robust. He's an underrated organiser and defensively, it's rarely that you see him upstaged or get beaten. You love the energy. He just competes on every single play. Where it's fascinating is... He and Nico are actually going to mark up opposite each other. So Tommy plays on the left, Nico plays on the right. If Tommy starts fast and he wants to really take him on, well, he can make an early statement. For mine, it's assessing who's going to own the big moments in this game. And you look at three North Queensland players, you've got Dearden, Drinkwater and, and Val Holmes, guys that you think want the ball in their hands when uh, the game's going to be on the line. You look at the Sharks and who do we think is going to own those big moments? And that's the question marks around the Sharks heading into the, uh, the do-or-die game. Mm. Gordy? Well, Nico said last night in his, in his interview that he's going to grab them, that he's just going to keep on going to the moments and he'll get one right. And mm. Nico has to, but like, uh, you're right about Tommy Dean. He's just an on the ball player. He's in every face, just tenacious and has a crack. Uh, you'd probably back the Cowboys. I think, you know, coming through their origin period, I think they've come through okay. Yeah. Like, and they've got big game players. You saw Cotter. Like, those guys, I reckon this is, you know, this is their last two rounds. Nico Hines has been the story of the week. Uh, am yeah. I over-exaggerating or out of line if I say that this is possibly the most important game of his career to date? I don't think you're... No, I don't think you're exaggerating. Obviously, he's played... He played in it... Well, he didn't get on the field in the grand final for, for the Storm, played a couple of origins, but at the moment, with at, at club level... Given the is, circumstances, yeah, I mean. And, not and not just scrutiny. because it's a final. Given the lead-up, given and the, the build-up and the scrutiny. And... Um, it's just not him, though, Brad. That's the thing. I think it's the whole Sharks will be feeling this pressure, but he it's magnified because he is their million-dollar man and their number seven. Mm. But no doubt, um, if, if they fall out in, in straight sets, we know what the narrative is going to be, not just on Nico, but on the club, on Craig Fitzgibbon as a coach. Mm. And um, they can't shake that until he walks away <laughs> with a big moment, big play to win his side of finals game. Yeah, I don't think look it's... at the Sharks. Like, they're hard-working, and you think that they get to this position all year. They just... Got to jump the next hurdle, and Nico Hines, he's a million dollar player. That's what they bought him to do. They bought him to get to this position and get him across the line. Listening to Brandy Alexander on Sunday, I yeah. wondered, well, is his best position fullback? Because that was where he went on that red hot run when he really shot the prominence at the Melbourne Storm. Mm -hmm. And yes, he had a breakout season initially with Cronulla in the number seven jumper, but we haven't seen it consistently now for this is two years. Running Got an opportunity in origin. That didn't mm. pan out as well as you would have liked. So I, I don't think it's overstating it at mm. all, Braith. This is the biggest game of Nico's career. Hopefully he stands up and, yeah. and he delivers. I'd, I'd love him to do that. I mean, as I said, I, I know what it feels like and a lot of other players in the competition do, and this is his moment. This is his opportunity. Now, you, you mentioned pressure. You mentioned pressure on the Sharks and their coach, Craig Fitzgibbon, Todd Payton, the other coach for the Cowboys. Who's under more pressure here as a coach? Yeah, they've both done. I think they've both done a really good job to get to where they are this season. But who want, Who needs this more? Who wants this more? Who's under the spotlight more? Go ask the fans. I reckon <laughs> they both say that they do. Like I reckon it's pretty even. I think Fitzy's done a great job with the squad that he's got. Um, he wants to win at this time of the year, and I think that Todd. I think the Cowboys had probably a slightly better roster. They've got more Origin players. Uh, they're up there and. You know, I think they've liked their chances. I think that they're building nicely. There's no doubt Fitzy's under more pressure. I actually don't think that's justified or warranted because if you look at the roster, mm. they've got two Kiwi internationals in Britain, Nicara and Ronaldo Molotalo. Yeah. And aside from that, they don't have a state of origin player. Yes, they'll get Adam Fanua Blake, who's an international next season. Yeah. But I think to have them in the top four the way that he has for all of this year and then also in his initial season, last year they made the finals, went out week one, mm. didn't finish top four, but I think with the roster that he's got and what he gets out of them over the course of an entire season, he deserves credit, but you need the win in mm. September, and so far, Fitz is 0-4, so he's under more pressure. If they go out in straight sets again, it's going to be interesting to see the backlash and what actually comes of it. Of course, they will cop criticism from the media and, and fans, but 
what Fitzy, what move Fitzy makes next to make sure it doesn't happen again. I think they've done that by bringing Adam Fennell Blake in. Okay. I, I really think if you look at that that four pack, it's same same a lot, uh, and there's a lot of toilers, a lot of guys that roll their sleeves up, but there's not a lot of dynamic players in the middle of the field to break a game open. Mm. And that's what Adam Fennell Blake were doing off the back of Blake Braley. I think it's going to be a lethal combination next year. I think he's the game changer that they desperately need. Depending on how they play, if Kennedy has another game similar to what he had against the Melbourne Storm last weekend, then I'm thinking, well, maybe he looks at surgery in terms of the spine. So Nico goes back to fullback. That Daniel Atkinson mm. is a competitor. He brings so much energy when he yeah. comes on the field. And we've seen in the limited opportunities that he's been given, yeah. he's up to it. Like, he orchestrated victory over the Melbourne Storm at Amy earlier this season. He's a damn good young player, so I think we might see him, if they lose, then they start to look at wholesale changes. So much pressure on all of the teams in the finals, none more so than the Cronulla Sharks.